Hi, and welcome to Film Forums. I'm Richard Williams, the creator of this platform, a place dedicated to the filmmaking community. We interview members of the film industry to find out what it really takes to make a movie, bring a script to screen, or secure that acting role. If that sounds good to you, please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favorite podcasting platform so you can be the first to know when an episode drops. We'd really appreciate it if you'd like and share this if you get value from this episode. Thank you. Greg Starr calling from Variety to congratulate you on your big win. Tell me about the, the subjects. I don't know if what I do makes a difference. Are you a killer, Malcolm? Guess we'll find out. You violated my privacy? You wrecked my life! For those who haven't seen it, um, I don't think too many people have because it's sort of just started and doing the festival circuit. Um, what is uh, your film The Subject about? Yeah, the subject tells the story of a successful white documentary filmmaker who is dealing with the fallout from his previous film where he caught the murder of a black teen on tape. And now fast forward, he's doing a new doc series for a big major network and somebody else is following his every move and taping it and it really sort of upends his life. So that's what it's about. As your first uh, feature film, um, what do you think you did particularly well and what may you have done differently if you could do it again? Yeah, I, I think one of the best things was the people and the collaborators. Um, every person I would hire or cast again to be in the film because it felt like such a perfect crew from the cast, Jason Biggs, Anjanou Ellis, Annabella Costa, everybody like that, to my DP, um, Darren Joe. We had an all-female producing team, but it just ran so smoothly because everybody really believed in the story. So I think in terms of team building and bringing a team together, that is something that I would definitely, you know, do again. Um, you know, in terms of the things, I mean, there are always, whenever you go back over any project, I was a different person when I shot that film because now time has moved on. I would probably do 20% of the shots a little bit differently because I have different experiences and a different take on it. But the thing that I've learned is you have to kind of be okay with that. And, and I sort of prioritize, is it a fatal mistake? And what I mean by that is, does it take the audience out out of the story and if it does that then that feels like it's not in service of the film but if it's just something that I'm gonna lose sleep over I live I live with it okay yeah that's a really good way of putting it actually kind of mm -hmm. dealing with kind of everyone I think you know, a lot of creative people have got a perfectionist streak and everyone self criticizes a lot don't they so if you can let that go within reason then uh, I think that's important to just to get stuff done really so, yeah. yeah I mean I think in the moment you need to go for perfection and that's what you're aiming for every single time but sometimes you just realize that's not going to be every single frame of the film. How did casting um, Jason Biggs come about and did you have any reservations given he is known for and primarily associated with comedy movies and American Pie etc? You know actually that, that's such a fantastic question. His name name came up really early as we were talking with our casting director and other people and we were like oh we love this thought because he brings a real likability to a character who otherwise could could be really um pouty moody etc and he's really the entree point for the audience in many ways in the story and it was like oh this is interesting he's done drama though a lot of it is on stage and i have a theater background and i have friends who've worked with him um in theater and on on film like or in tv the orange is the new black and so i had seen him do drama i knew he could do it and also i have really great respect for comedic actors the timing that has to go into comedy is so difficult and i think often under rated because it, it to hit that moment is so tough so I had a really good inkling that he could hit every moment that we needed in this film the operatic flow of it and then I met him in person and was like oh yes this is Phil I can't imagine anybody else playing this character yeah I was actually um I watched it uh, last night um probably had watched bits but I watched it fully last night um and I was really surprised at how um, how just how good he was. I don't mean to sound disrespectful when I say that, mm -hmm. but um, within a minute or two, I completely forgot I was watching Jim from American Pie and mm -hmm. and just 
yeah, I was absorbed. Um, so all due respect to him for sort of, you know, shaking it off. I haven't watched every film that he's ever made, and I know that you're right, he's done dramatic roles, but primarily it is comedy stuff that he's done. Um, so I, I don't know, if this, if this film for me takes off and gets um, kind of the exposure that it deserves, um, then I can see people maybe seeing him in a different light. Um, so... Yeah. yeah, and I, I think, you know, that was the challenge and the really exciting part for him was to do something really different outside of his comfort zone, what he's used to doing. And I have to give him so much credit because to go outside your comfort zone, if you're talking about doing that with Martin Scorsese, is really different. If you're talking about doing it with a first time director and the screenwriter's first film, that's that takes a lot of risk. And so I give him a lot of credit for entrusting that type of performance with us as a team. I saw a Zoom meeting, uh, on, I think it was on YouTube, between yourself, the scriptwriter, uh, Gia Carapatterson, and uh, Niall Bullock. Mm -hmm. um, we talked in, in depth about, about the film. I, I watched most of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it was interesting, I think, uh, to, to hear about uh, how freezing cold it was on, on one day. So I just wondered if you could maybe just, just talk to us about filming in the freezing cold and the sort of challenges that, that you face with that, really. Yeah, that was our final day of shooting. And to say it was frigid, I mean, it was, I didn't even want to go to work because it was so cold. I think we bought everything that's at Uniqlo, that the heating clothing that they have for everybody. We had soup, um, you know, from the beginning of the shoot throughout everywhere, as much soup as you wanted to keep yourself warm. It was just incredible. We had warming blankets for everybody, heated cars, like we did everything we possibly could within our constraints. And the actors were so lovely. I think a couple of them luckily like cryotherapy, so they're used to the <laughs> cold. <laughs> like That was very helpful in that moment. But the other part of it was they were just so glad to see each other. And it was a shortish day, but it felt long because of the cold. And the person who was running our shoot that day when we came in and we were all hanging out said, nobody's leaving to go home. Why is that? And I said, we just all love each other and we love this film. And we had a lot of background actors on the film. And I was convinced that nobody was gonna show up because they knew they were gonna be outdoors. And every single one of them, this is the magic of this film, every single one of them showed up Awesome. They were great. Now we got them in and out. They were outside for maybe 20 minutes total because it was brutal. But yeah, it was it was just really a team effort to make it happen. The final scene, I, I say final scene, but it's around a third of the, the movie's length. Mm -hmm. um, was the scene set up and the length the same as the original stage production or was it very different? I was curious about that. No, it's it's about the same. It's it's about the same structurally. There are some differences in the stage play. Everything happens at Bill's house. Um, you don't ever leave the house in the film. We do leave the house. So she she opened up the world. But that part is about the same. And that final scene, which is about a third of the movie, um, we've actually cut. I don't know, maybe four to seven minutes out of it. So there's even more of that scene um, that is that is there and. Probably if I hadn't been a first time filmmaker, I wouldn't have gone for such a challenging scene to try and direct my first feature. <laughs> that probably wasn't the wisest thing, but I was excited by it. So that was, that was kind of going to be one of my other questions. So um, I was thinking like um, you got basically got 40 minutes more or less of just mm -hmm. two characters in one room talking in depth, which is for me, it was fantastic, a really, really strong scene. But was that more difficult or than, than usual? Because that's not a you know, usual scene length or was that easier i mean you've just alluded to the fact that it was challenging so why was that challenging well you're shooting a, a long scene over multiple days so it's keeping the continuity we shot that scene two days and then we had two days off and then we shot two days again and honestly it was the best because it's a heavy lift of an emotional scene so having a break in that was actually helpful to it um i mean working with great actors like Anjanu ellis and jason biggs makes it easier they were so on point we did shoot that with two cameras um because i wanted to make sure we were capturing every moment that we possibly could and not making the actors go over and over it again um that would have been tough the real the real challenge with that was how do you keep the visual diversity in in a scene like that and so to be honest we looked at a lot of david fincher because he'll use a lot of different angles and particularly this one scene in mind hunter that we looked at it and so we said okay this we blocked out 
we're going to do this from this angle and we're going to move the camera around. And I think that that works. I think it keeps enough of an interest and you feel like you're in it with them. Um, it still feels claustrophobic, but not like, God, when are we getting out of this? Like we're still in it. Then so that's what I hope for. Yeah. Well, I say last night, I thought, am I too tired to watch the rest of it or not? And I hit play and that's when the scene, this final scene started. And I think it says a lot about the film and how good that final scene is that I just carried on watching it and I was happy to. And by the fit, by the end of it, I thought, God, that's really, really good. If it had been mediocre or just OK, I honestly, I think I would have just paused and carried on this morning. So it was really, really effective and really, really good. So Oh, um, wonderful. That that mean that means a lot. And yeah, I know it is a surprise how it comes, but we hope that it's the payoff that you've watched this character through the film, what he's going through, and then you get to this final sort of reckoning scene and that, that you can't take your eyes off of it, hopefully. Yeah, no, absolutely. Totally, totally was. Um, so what's the main takeaway that you'd like the audience to get from the, the subject? There are so many. I mean, I think in the United States, I know across the world too, there have been a lot of conversations and protests around Black Lives Matter, white privilege and all of that. And I think Chisa Hutchinson wrote a nuanced script that unpacks these, but in a powerful story. And hopefully, you know, documentary filmmakers, artists even like me, that we think about the people that we work with and think about them as people, not as a a mode to get us to something else, not as just, you know, something that we discard at the end of it or like use furniture, which is a line from the movie. And to think about how we all have to hold and do our part in society to make it better. If we want it better, if we want it equitable, that's on everybody. And I'm saying that about myself as well. And hopefully we'll have discussions so that the film can open up discussions around that. Yeah, the timing, I think, I'm sure you must have spoken about this to other people and stuff, but the whole timing with Black Lives Movement, et cetera, it's almost come at the right time, really, uh, in terms of the discussion point and, and it's uh, very topical, basically. Yeah. It is, you know, and we really were discussing as the pandemic hit, because a lot of festivals were going online, is that the right thing to do? You know, for an independent film that wants distribution, there were a lot of questions around that. And for our first festival, I had to make the decision on the day that in here in the United States, there was a video released of Ahmed Arbery being murdered by two, um, by three actually white men in Georgia. And upon seeing that, I said, yeah, now is the time because even though our film is not exactly that, it does bring up those issues and hopefully can allow for multiple people to talk about it. So, yeah. What made you decide to embark on a career in filmmaking? So what, mm -hmm. what has inspired you to get into it? You know, I think getting older honestly. And I had a dream. I loved films from the time I was young. I tell the story that I begged my mom to take me to see Kramer versus Kramer in the movie theater when I was like five or six. Right. I wanted, I, yeah, I wanted to see the movie. And then on the way home, we discussed it. And I love movies that you can discuss afterwards. And I mean, I love silly films. I also do live tweeting of 80s movies with people that's gotten me through the pandemic. So I love that too. Don't get me wrong. But I do really love those ones that you can't stop thinking about that you want to talk about with people and I started producing for other people and I learned a lot watching other directors on set and it sort of sparked in me this this desire that you know I've always wanted to do this I've made short films in my 20s and at other times why don't I do it now what time do I have to waste and so that was it and then but it was just really about finding the stories that I want to tell and once I read the subject I knew that that was a story that I wanted out in the world and if I could make that happen I should do everything I could to make it happen. What advice would you give to budding directors I know you're a first-time director but mm -hmm. so, yeah now you've obviously had that experience and clearly you'll, you'll move on with with other projects so what advice would you give to others in the same position basically? do it like don't hesitate like find whatever you have whatever people you know borrow any camera do a story do something that's short find a 48 hour film festival where you have 48 hours to create it do whatever because it gets the juices flowing and every experience you have will make you a better filmmaker like I said for me watching other directors work I mean that was like being in film school 
because I got to see how they talk to actors and borrow the things that I liked and then think about the things that were like, oh, that I couldn't do that well. That person's really good at that. I would be terrible. And so, you know, that really hones it. I think any experience that you can get um, is great. And also, um, what really figure out what stories you want to tell and what's important because that's the whole reason and why you're the person to tell it. Um, what advice would you give to budding film producers? So I ask you that question because I noticed that you were a producer or you produced mm -hmm. a lot of films. So yeah. Yeah, I would say meet as many people as you can, read as many scripts as possible. Um, I came through it was a bunch of theater friends that I had that were initially making some films and that led to other opportunities. And that's how it normally happens is word of mouth. If you want to be producing film, then meet filmmakers because they're the ones that you can be helpful for or reach out to a producer whose film you really like and see if you can come and, you know, intern PA, be a part of it because you will learn a lot and watching how people work and you'll see, you know, what's important to me is not only the work that you make, but how you make it. And you'll also see if that producer or that team makes work in the way that you want to make work, not just what they put out in the world, which can be great. Um, but do they make it in a way that you would want to be a part of that? going forward. And the last question, um, what are you working on now or next? Yeah, so the pandemic has thrown sort of a curveball. I was going to do a docu-fiction about dancers in their 70s um, who do swing dancing. It would be based on my aunt as she finds a new dance partner after 60 years because my uncle has died. That part is true. Um, my mom was going to be in a love triangle with a 50-year-old man and his 40-year-old girlfriend. Not true, but very juicy. She was very excited to do that. But I think it's unethical right now to shoot a film with seven-year-olds in, in close spaces, dancing, like not good. So I'm going to push that to the side, come back to it when I can. So I'm actually, and this is, surprises me, I'm developing a horror film very gory, but has a lot of tension, a la the last scene in the subject, which I've realized I like dealing with tension and how do you bring that out. And I am super excited. Um, we're doing a reading of it this week, and then I think we're going to really start trying to work on it. So head into pre-production. But yeah, I'm very excited to play with those elements and also the sort of aesthetics of horror. So I've been watching a lot of horror films or re-watching a lot to yeah. steep myself yeah. in that. A good excuse to, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I think that final scene, if you can call it a scene, um, was just amazing. I was honestly thinking in the back of my mind as I was watching it. Maybe this sounds a bit sensationalist, but I think it's Oscars worthy. I really do oh, think it's as good as that. Um, so yeah, just kudos to you, big thumbs up, and, and I really enjoyed it. So um, you found something there, I think, and, and yeah. Well, Richard, that, that means a lot. It really does, because I know you've seen a lot of films, but that's why you make a film like this, is that it will impact people. And it means a lot that people see the work that Anjou and Jason did and see it in that light. I feel the same way. Like, I feel like they should win awards or be nominated because I think that they poured everything that they could into those characters and were real with it. And that's also, after that experience, kind of what I'm intrigued about doing a horror film is like, can it have the scary elements, but can it be really character driven? where you don't forget the characters is it, you know is that possible that's the challenge and so I, I guess I like challenges 